All right, here we go, guys. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get started now that we are he all here. And uh, I think first things first, I should go ahead and show you guys the new features in Pike and Shots campaigns that makes it such a great game and such a, I guess, a better successor to uh, Pike and Shot. Now, if we take a look over here um, at the historical setting, when you buy Pike and Shot campaigns, you get every single one of the Pike and Shot campaigns, or I should say Pike and Shot historical campaigns, as well as the Tercio de Salvo DLC for free. So that's just thrown in there with the game, and that's just an awesome, awesome deal. Another thing that really makes this great is in this Pike and Shot, we can go to campaigns, we can fight our very own campaign, we can customize our units, customize our armies, we can raise taxes, we can do all sorts of things. And that's why today I'm going to play as Gustavus Adolphus, Lion of the North, in an attempt to crush the Imperial armies of Germany, or in this case, more Bavaria, Württemberg, etc. Um, we are, of course, Protestants in this particular Let's Play, fighting the Catholics, uh, fighting Mother Church, as it were. And let's go ahead and jump right in. So guys, with Gustavus Adolphus, we start off, uh, we've actually won the first part of the campaign, essentially. Um, and now the Catholics have come and they have decided to ramp up their military and they've actually started to create their military after the Swedish model. Uh, this actually happened. So when the, um, this particular war started, the Swedes were so successful in their attacks and so successful with their pike and shot charges that the entire Imperial Army had to be reformed to the Swedish model, which is pretty embarrassing for, for the Germans, I must say, uh, or the I should say the, uh, the, the Catholics in general, or the Southern Germans more like. Um, so we're going to go ahead here, we're going to start as the Swedes. A really cool aspect of this game is you can actually go here and change your own forces initial setup to player based. So you can s set up the forces however you'd like. Personally, I like the way that the PC actually sets up uh, this game. So I'm going to go ahead and just choose automatic. So here we go guys, we're jumping in. Welcome to the campaign, your majesty. Your objective is to capture the imperialist-held provinces and defeat their armies until their leaders accept freedom of worship and renounce the Catholic Church's claims on former church lands. Of course, so now our officers have raised uh, armies for us, etc., and they're all laid out here in the actual campaign map. So we can actually just mouse over them and kind of see how many units are in this particular army. We can right-click for specifics on the units, etc., uh, and this is obviously very helpful in the game. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine these armies uh, because I want to go to war with the Imperial uh, Army and I want to be able to fight them. I don't want to be at a loss of men. I don't want to be losing materials or anything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and actually combine this army. I'm going to form two different ones. I don't want to combine all four armies because all the enemy will do is just run away. Uh, that's an unfortunate aspect is the enemy can always run away from an area and uh, make it very hard for you to get it back. Of course, if we wanted to, we could also camp out in places like Westphalia, Lorraine, uh, Franconia, and we could eventually besiege this place and start getting taxes from them, which is pretty awesome. So let's go ahead. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have enough AP. We've got to end our turn and see what those dastardly Catholics are going to do. Um, let's see. All right, so it looks like they're going to move into Silesia. Don't like that one bit. Uh, and they're also moving into Brandenburg. So they're moving deep into German territory, uh, and that's not good for us. Um, deep into northern German territory, I should say. So I'm going to go ahead. Uh, first things first, I want to fight off this guy in Lower Saxony, but this means moving one of my armies all the way back, which is not something that I really enjoy, but we're going to try anyway. So there we go. As you can see, the enemy retreated. We can go ahead and chase him, but he's just going to run away uh, to the Palatinate and get away in this case. So we're going to keep going on the offensive, um, and hopefully we can get a victory here. So I'm going to try to get them to attack us. It's always better to be on the defensive in games like this. Uh, in this case, the province of the Palatinate has fallen. This is not good. So we want to see if we can go ahead and get the Catholics in battle. Uh, they're running away to Württemberg. We know they're going to have a major force there in Württemberg uh, because they've got two armies massing together. So I'm trying to think, is it even worth going to war there or should we just play it cool? I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back here with my Swedish first and we're going to go ahead and raise a new army. Oh no, we can't in Hesse. We're going to have to get to Saxony. Um, there we go. Saxony has... I should say the troops in Saxony have run away and I'm gonna try to raise some more troops here Okay, so taxes haven't come in yet. That sucks. We can't raise more troops now Do you guys think I should attack Württemberg here? I'm not sure this is a great idea uh, But we certainly could try it That's an awesome firefly boy sleep is never important. Uh, well not for me anyway. I'm practically up all the time 
All right, guys, so um, I think we're going to go ahead and we're going to attack. Uh, because even if we lose, we'll get a cool battle. It looks like the first Catholic army has retreated Wurttemberg, which actually makes my job a bit easier. Um, and we'll go ahead and move. Actually, we'll just end turn. That's great. If they want to run away, perfect. Um, so here we go. As you guys can see, basically the size of your forces is going to determine just how much damage you're doing to the actual economy of a province and the chances of you actually taking that province back. So having a large army is good in the sense that you're going to take these provinces faster and have a bigger chance of taking them, but not so good in the sense that you can't split your armies up and send them everywhere. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go into Bavaria. I actually want to see if I can raise a new army. Uh, sadly, we just don't have the tax revenue to do it yet. We have to wait a few more turns. So I'm going to go ahead and see, first of all, I want to move these guys out of here. That's just unacceptable. Get your Catholic behinds out. Let's move them out. And okay, they're going to jump into Bohemia. Uh, now, as you can see, the two forces are very even here. Now, I'm going to go to my Swedish second army. And if we move over here, it's going to be... I believe a slight Swedish advantage Wow so this is really cool guys it's actually gonna work in our favor hopefully and we're gonna start our first battle here in pike and shot campaigns against the Catholics so right now um like I said I put this to PC setup so the PC is actually gonna more or less set up my army for me but I can still customize it which is a great aspect of the game so as you guys can see this is how they've set up my army right here um, the Swedish turn I can go ahead and start moving my guys into formation. Uh, I'm going to put my cavalry here on the right flank, but I want to take a look at the field. Uh, this game is actually based off miniatures, sort of, uh, I don't know if you guys know the miniatures you play on a tabletop. That's what this game is based off. So you really need to survey the field and get a look at the terrain before you know what you're going to do, essentially. So I'm going to go ahead and try to make a hard, strong cavalry line over here on this right side so that we can try to flank the enemy may not work but we must try i'm gonna go ahead and turn all our cavalry this way uh towards the enemy units we'll also bring this guy over here and turn him it's not a trap those cap oh yes i know those damn catholics trapping us left and right um so we're gonna go ahead and uh put this guy here and of course this is going to be my right flank as for my spearmen, or in this case, pike and shot units, you might think, you know, shouldn't you stick them next to each other and basically form a line here? Actually, no. Um, interestingly enough, in this particular era of war, line combat is not a great thing. It's really much better uh, to essentially have the men sort of spaced out like this, because if one of them gets flanked, this guy can always come to his aid and hit the enemy troop. So we're not going to be doing any lines or anything like that. That's just madness. It's gotten me killed before, and I'm not going to let it get me killed again. Uh, so let's go ahead and move these guys forward. That seems to be fine. We'll go ahead and move this guy forward as well and turn towards the enemy. And I think that's pretty much good. I could actually go ahead and put these guys up here. Eh, a little risky, but we'll try it anyway. All right, let's go. It's gonna. We're going to go ahead and end the turn. Now, it's the residual shooting phase. This is obviously the phase when shots are fired if there are any units in range. Right now, there are no units in range. So we're not going to be shooting anything. Um, but now it is the Catholic turn, and we can see what these Imperial bastards have in their army. Um, looks like, wow, quite a few over here. I'm not liking this. Um, and right now, uh, you know, I don't know what, what the game's doing. Interestingly enough, our frames are fine, but it's jumping very strangely. There we go. I guess they were just unlimbering their cannons. That makes sense. Uh, residual shooting phase, they may be able to fire from those hills. And this is the problem. They have the uphill advantage here. So I've got to be very careful about how I approach this situation. If you guys want to give any advice down below, do. But uh, it's looking a little frightening. I've also got a lot of woods over here, which is perfect for a cavalry uh, unit to pop out of. Uh, and that's not something I'm looking forward to. So I'm actually approaching this battlefield very carefully. I want to make sure that all my cavalry is prepared to attack. Uh, I don't want any cavalry left behind. That's just going to make me worry even more. So let's go ahead and move these guys up. And of course, we are the attacking force, so we must move forward uh, and charge the enemy. So we're going to go ahead and start moving forward. I'm not going to unlimber my cannons yet because it's really no point at this, at this range. We're not going to get any hits. Uh, let's move forward. Action. I can actually leave this Swedish Pike and Shot unit right there for this turn, and we're going to keep exploiting this left flank. So we're attacking on two flanks here, and I'm hoping that one of them is going to find its way to the center uh, of the enemy line, eventually work its way around and crush those damn Catholics. So let's keep moving forward here. All right, awesome. 
pop this guy out as well. And by the way, this is my favorite unit of the game. Just look at the flag of the Karasiers. These guys have the coolest freaking flag in the world. It's just a skull and crossbones. They're beasts in combat. These guys are probably my favorite cavalry in, in, the, in the game. Watch them retreat on the first attack because I'm playing with them. Yes, a lot of cannon party commissar, and I've noticed that um, for some reason. Hey, Tank of Doom, how you doing, man? We've got an Australian. We've got an Australian here. Um, yes, those cannon, the Catholics are, are cannon heavy, and uh, it's one thing that really annoys me. You need to basically move up as quickly as possible. Uh, if you don't, you, you have some pretty serious problems against the Catholics. You need to get to those front lines quickly, and that's why I prefer to defend against them, but in this case, we don't have a choice. We've got to go ahead and launch an attack. Um, so let's go ahead, and uh, we can end the turn now, I believe. Yes, more or less. I think m most things have been completed. Let's go ahead and end. And yes, if you guys have noticed, um, all the units do have different regimental flags, which is a pretty cool feature, too. Uh, this can be customized later in the game. And it's very, very fun. There we go, those Catholic cannons. Oh, 13! Holy crap! Come on, man. How can they fire at that range? We're in the freaking 16th century. This is not possible. I don't accept it. All right, fair enough. Um, we're going to go ahead and move forward here, guys. Now, we, we're we going to have to do something about this right side. But as you can see, there, there's a lot of cavalry here. And not to mention, there's also a lot of wood. So I am actually don't think it would be a great idea to move into this direction. I'm going to leave my Dragoons up here just in case the enemy moves up. We can start shooting. In fact, I might harass the enemy with the Dragoons just by moving up and firing a bit. Uh, and keeping this cavalry back here, our horse cavalry, just in case the enemy tries to give chase and charge. I don't think they'll try, though, to be honest with you. All right, let's go ahead and just get our guys up here on the hill. Let the enemy know that we've got troops, the Finnish Hakapaleta troops, um, to crush them, as well as Veteran Horse. And Veteran Horse, obviously, exceptionally good at wasting the enemy units. Um, as you guys can also see, some units get special sort of abilities. This Swedish Salvo of Foot actually gets a cannon, which will show up as LC in the campaign map. And you can also purchase these for your unit. So if you just have like a boring basic pike and shot unit, you can ma you can soup this unit up um, over time. You can also refit it, which is another aspect we might not be getting to this particular uh, Let's Play or, or stream just because this battle is going to take a while uh, to crush these Catholics or maybe be crushed by them. Who knows? Only time will tell. So we're going to go ahead and keep moving. Now, once we get to this sort of river area, this deep stream, uh, this is a dangerous area, as you can imagine. You know, this is an area where the enemy could just unleash anything on us and really kick a, kick our ass badly. So we're going to do everything we can to avoid that. Um, and I'm actually going to go ahead and just keep pushing on that left flank. The left flank seems pretty empty. It seems like a place where we may be able to gather some initiative. In fact, we're going to open up on some light hussars up here. Um, but you never know. You know, the enemy obviously has that uphill advantage, and that counts for a lot. And again, a deep stream, I don't recommend this ever as a defensible position. Um, I'm definitely making an Agrippa mistake right there, but I'm hoping that just because we're more or less out of range of the enemy, that they won't be able to hit this unit. Uh, that's, that's what I'm hoping, of course. So let's go ahead and move forward. Everybody seems to have moved forward, I believe. Uh, this unit, I think, still needs to go a little bit. Yes. And again, we're not unlimbering our cannons yet. We will soon, though. Probably another turn, we'll go ahead and unlimber them, start firing. All right, let's end. We're gonna get to the residual shooting phase. And those Catholic cannons, damn you! What if this can't be, this can't be correct. Come on, I'm a Protestant. Those cannons can't kill me. Dude, wasn't Gustav Adolphus that said, God is my shield? Apparently, God doesn't make for a very good shield. I, I mean, I'm sorry, it's just, my men are still getting shot, and it's, I'm, you know, it's, I'm not wanting that to happen. But here we go. We've actually led the Light Hussars into a beautiful trap here. Um, we're about to crush those Light Hussar units, by the way. Um, they've basically just charged into our main cavalry lines without even knowing it. And I think it's because of the hill that's in the way that they didn't even see that. Uh, so hopefully we should be responding very, very well here. Um, it's now going to be our turn, and I'm going to treat these guys to a little Karassier charge. So we're going to go ahead and hit the Light Hussars. And of course they're evading. Of course they're evading. Wouldn't you run away from a flag like that? I would. Immediately. Um, here we go. We're going to go ahead and actually the chances for victory here are not as good. Um, as you can see, our win percentage is pretty low. So what I'm going to do, 
I'm actually just going to go ahead and run right past him. If I can. If not, I'll go ahead and open fire. Uh, I'm also going to move my third commanded shot up here. Open fire at those retreating light hussars, also known as cowards. Have you seen a single one of my men retreat yet? I didn't think so. Hey, Bucky Bits, how's it going, man? Thank you, Tank of Doom. I like to think that uh, my Australian accent is fairly accurate. Yes, Imperial Storm, exactly, Firefly Boy. Uh, boy. Um, that's actually my main concern right now, is just the, uh, the cannon, essentially. But it's going to get a lot worse for us, sure. Trust me. So here we go. We're going to charge once again. And the enemy will evade, as you can see. They are not interested in getting to a fight with our horse unit. They know exactly what's going to happen to them. They're going to be chopped up to bits. So they're evading. Um, and I actually was hoping to catch them. Unfortunately, we didn't. Now, the good news is, um, even though we didn't catch them, we are getting pretty far along on this left flank. And we're about to get around the enemy almost entirely. In fact, I'm going to move this unit up here. Um, and get prepared for the veteran horse to go ahead and charge into us so that we can get a fight started. Uh, so let's go ahead. We can open fire on these light hussars. Uh, since we're already uphill, I think this is probably a good position to stay put. Of course, we are the attacking force, so we're going to have to move up eventually. But we can we can give that time, because sometimes the enemy uh, will actually get overconfident, and they'll start attacking you. Then again, with those cannons there, I think we probably have to get to battle very, very soon. So we're just going to go ahead, full march. Uh, try to get to the position as quickly as possible. Uh, and let's get this cannon. We're going to move him one more over here. Uh, actually, I think this is all right. Let's unlimber him here. If he can return fire next turn at one of these guns, I'll be happy, to be honest with you. All right, what about these guys? I kind of wish we could have taken back this particular move, because I, I would have liked to have all the cavalry over here on the left flank, but I think it's a bit late for that. We could still do it, but that's just going to take really, really long. So let's move forward here. Yes, wonderful. Uh, and we should be able to open fire pretty soon. Here we go. We're obviously in the deep stream area, so we're not in the best position. We're going to go ahead and open fire at the enemy. I'm going to move my commanded shot up as well. Uh, the, by the way, a better position would be somewhere like over here, um, behind these trees. It does say open ground, but again, these trees add a sort of defensive perimeter. Uh, woods, obviously, a great place to uh, actually be in. Not to fire from, necessarily, but to have some melee combat in. Let's go ahead and open up again on those dragoons. All right, beautiful. It looks like our men are not firing nearly as accurately as the enemy, but uh, that will certainly change over time. Uh, the Swedish pike and shot units are undoubtedly better at shooting than the Imperial units. So we'll go ahead and move forward if we can. I think we've more or less done all our movement. And, oh, we've still got this commanded shot. That's right. He's not a coward. It was just a tactical retreat. Stop it. He was very, very brave, tactically retreating, running home to his mother. I mean, come on. Let's just, you know, it's war. You know, things happen. We've got to forgive people. We've got to forgive them. All right, let's go ahead and end the turn here. Uh, let's see what the enemy is going to be doing. And I will jump into the chat. Again, guys, I apologize. Um, I am not one of these Slytherin streamers that has a dual screen. So when I have to check your comments, I've got to basically alt-tab out and uh, take a look. And I love talking with you guys. I love getting your feedback and all that. Uh, but I really need to go ahead and purchase a dual screen soon. Um, it's definitely something on my to-buy list. All right, here we go. Wow, the enemy's actually coming off that hill. That's what I would like to see. If, they, if they're actually going to be honest and, and brave, they'll actually come off that hill and give us a fair fight. So I like that. Maybe they're going to actually come off and meet us in open combat. I doubt it, but let's see. All right, there we go. Oh, you little bastards. How you see that they run away and then they come back to open fire? What is that? Right, right now, the enemy is doing a very good job with uh, those Dragoons. They're actually firing at us with four Dragoon units. I thought there were only two there. Um, and those other two popped out of the woods really well. Um, let's see if we can get some residual shots. Awesome. All right, so we can get some residual shots. Hope you guys liked my uh, Napoleon Dynamite. Awesome. It's just awesome. God. Now it is our turn. Um, we're going to go ahead and move forward. And look at this. If we could charge in these guys, oh, we would be doing beautifully. But all we can do is basically fire into their flanks, which is just still pretty good. Um, so we're going to go ahead and fire into those Imperial soldiers' flanks. Fire again. 14 down. Like I said, told you guys, the Swedish... Um, the Swedish bike and shot are awesome. They're just great. I mean, these guys shoot really well. At this distance, it's just amazing. I'm going to take a look here quickly. 
God! Exactly, Party Commissar. Yes, Firefly Boy, this is true. Um, for some reason, whenever I try to download the Twitch app onto my smartphone, uh, it just uh, gives me some sort of message like, uh, this cannot connect, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'm not going to find the message now, but eventually I will. And yes, welcome to anybody that just got here. Um, we see more people are joining the stream. Uh, I hope that uh, Peter's still with us, but I think he uh, he may have run off. He's a good friend of mine. He's, he's British. It's unfortunate, but it is what it is. All right, guys. Um, so let's see here what we can do. Like I said, the enemy may be making a major mistake coming off this hill. At the same time, they've still got those cannons up there, and that's something I need to get rid of. But we also have to focus on these units over here. So I think what I'm going to do actually going to get into range here and sadly now we're disrupted this is a very bad situation a unit that's disrupted essentially has a big flag over it i think it was party commissar that said this uh it may have been somebody else in the uh, chat um which essentially just has a big flag over it saying charge me because if you charge a disrupted unit there's a good chance they're going to break um now this is hilarious um <laughs> commanded shot are basically guys just with muskets they have like no pikes at all but for whatever reason, whenever I actually get commanded shot into a charge, like right now we are charging, um, I believe, a Dragoon unit. Yes. Uh, whenever I get them into a charge against a horse unit or a cavalry unit of some sort, they absolutely take off running. I think it's hilarious. Um, they're actually quite effective against enemy cavalry. So I don't know what that's about, but uh, certainly something to consider when you're playing your pike and shot games. All right, here we go, guys. We will charge with our Dragoons into theirs. And course now 16 awesome so there we go the enemy broke off fell away from battle that certainly helps us although it's not as good as a full retreat of course um they just fell back they they regrouped and retreated to a better position and we obviously need to get better better situations than that but that's a start right it's a start um let's go ahead and try to get over here to this wood and in fact if we can open up on this reserve pike and shot i will remember reserve pike and shot are the lowest of the low there are peasants brought up from every single village in the area um, and just basically given a pike and not told who they're fighting for what they're fighting for just told if you don't fight for us we're going to slaughter your entire family it's really pretty much that simple um so here we go we're going to charge and the reason i went for that charge even though the odds were not entirely in our favor is because we were getting a flank attack and as you guys can imagine a flank attack is much better than a regular attack we're also going to charge this unit and it looks like our cavalry oh i did not expect oh man i did not expect the Grossiers to do that badly they're usually exceptionally well. Um, they usually do exceptionally well, I should say. So that's that's quite unfortunate. But um, hopefully they can come back and make up for that for that terrible mistake of theirs. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look here. So we're just going to open fire on that unit. And I could charge downhill. I think that should give us a bonus for charging downhill. And indeed it did. And there we go. The enemy is cowardly re retreating again like a bunch of cowards. I mean, it's amazing. But right now the Imperial Army is essentially surviving by retreating. Um take a look here like i said our men are surprisingly good against cavalry unfortunately hussars do not make up part of that list because unlike dragoons who partially fight on foot hussars are pure cavalry units and uh, you can imagine if you get into a fight with these guys they're not friendly they're really not uh, they love cutting down peasants in droves let's go ahead we're going to charge into the flank of this unit too and once again very indecisive but hopefully that will eventually turn around and we'll be doing extremely well against the enemy here um limbered once again i guess i limbered them i don't remember limbering them but i must have uh in any case i needed to move them forward so that's fine uh let's keep moving these cavalry around and if we can get these guys over here quickly uh to this point of action we are going to be in an awesome position because we can get behind these dragoons and just absolutely smash them uh, i don't like the fact that this <laughs> light hussar unit was able to evade into my back lines like i think there should be some rules with evasion like if you're going to evade and you fall behind enemy lines you should get an automatic disruption because now he can just kind of go willy-nilly and charge into and attack all of my troops and i don't like that um yes Yes, Bucky Bits. Bucky Bits, that's really cool. So Bucky Bits just said, guys, that Hussars are Hungarian cavalry riding for the Austrian king. Um, very, very cool. I've read a lot of stories and history about Hussars and sort of their culture. Um, I, I want to say similar to Cossacks, very uh, violent people, uh, to be sure. Um, cavalry having free reign behind your lines should be just fine. <sighs> Ooh, well, since they're in the pike lines, Party Commissar, you may be right. Um, since they're in our pike lines, you know, our pikes cannot be attacked from behind or anything like that. Um, you know, if you're in a pike unit, you can basically 
respond to any flank attacks, which is great. But if they decide to go for that commander shot or if they try to flank my cavalry units uh, on the side, I'm going to be pissed off. And that's what I think they're going to try. Uh, but here we go. So let's get back to the battle. Whoa, 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 whoa. All right, here we go. 360 degrees. What, I wonder what kind of view you guys prefer. Like, I personally, um, I kind of like just the panoramic like this, but a lot of people like to play like this, so you actually feel like you're on this side controlling this side of the board. Um, and as you can see, the enemy army seems to outnumber us without a doubt. Um, you can just take a look at their troops here. They've got a tremendous amount of cannon. We've already seen that, and uh, there's really not much we can do about their cannon except get there quickly. One good thing about cannon is when you charge cannon, it disperses automatically or retreats automatically, one or the other. So that's why you can't get cannon near men. Uh, they will absolutely destroy it. Let's end our turn here, guys. Residual shooting phase. Oh! This game cannon. At least now they're firing at my cannon. Something I'm too concerned about. Oh man, 18 down, <laughs> devastating shots. If the Catholics win this battle, it will be because of that artillery. I promise you, um, because they have managed to strike down so many of my men before they get to the to the actual point of contact that their morale is just going to drop. Um, so here we go, very very even as we can see. It's now the Catholic turn. What will these Catholics think of next? A lot of nice shooting there by the Catholics. Not as good as our shooting, of course, but uh, I'll accept it. It's decent. And now they're actually charging into our flank, and look at that. Beautiful. Our guys managed to hold off that attack. Uh, just a regular uh, veteran horse unit, or actually, excuse me, a horse unit. Not even a veteran. Uh, we managed to crush them there, or fragment them, and hopefully we can make them run next turn. Um, sadly, our men are making the same mistake their men were making before, and they're starting to evade the troops, because Dragoons, they're fancy pants, what can I say, you know? They're sort of the, uh, the noblemen of cavalry, you know, they, they have pistols, they're, they're very, they're not exactly going to get into a fight if it means that they could possibly get wiped out. They'd much rather retreat and live to fight another day, which is a tactic that I don't really prefer really like in this particular setting um you know so world war ii that sort of thing it's a great uh, it's a great tactic in this setting it's not we need to constantly attacking and there we go look at our our return fire it's exceptional uh 20 down there just by 15 down right there just by pike and shot so we really need to keep that up and we can't forget that a lot of the enemy units uh, are made up of the local peasantry that is to say they are pike and shot straight from the ground they haven't even received training indecisive melee once again very indecisive still of course this this side over here the enemy's right flank is not doing well and there we go the enemy's unit has broken off and that's just awesome an enemy unit breaking away uh it's going to disrupt some units back here and like i said this this game is all about chain reactions so if you can make one unit run you make another unit disrupt if you can make that unit run and he's around other units everybody's going to get freaked out they're going to see that their friends are leaving the battlefield that their flanks have just collapsed and eventually they're going to take off too so let's go ahead first and uh, I'm actually going to see if I can turn back and still fire. That's pretty cool, but if I can, uh, that's one good thing about Dragoons is their ability to move so quickly. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and charge here, and hopefully these Dragoons will not evade, but of course we know <laughs> how Dragoons are, so they're pulling back. But now we are pulling these guys up, and these are the guys that can really do a number here on the right flank of the enemy, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll move this guy forward, these Dragoons open fire and if we can get into contact here with this enemy unit i certainly will i don't think we can right now and they have an uphill advantage but look at that they totally missed us uh, i think they're pretty much scared of our second fighting shot let's return fire that's more like it enemy disrupted um i'm gonna go ahead and move this guy here uh actually i'll leave him there for now but i don't like the fact that he's kind of hiding behind our other uh soldier or pike and shot unit here i really want him in the in the fray in the thick of things all right let's move this guy up oh boy here we go. Can we get a shot? Yes. 12 down. Uh, we also want to focus on this pike and shot unit. If I can charge them, I certainly will. Uh, if I could just get in the woods and shoot at them, even better. So we'll go ahead and open fire. It's like they just saw a huge plume of smoke from the woods. A bunch of their guys dropped. They don't know what's going on. Uh, now I'm making a slight mistake here, and that is getting these guys in a line. That's usually not a good idea. So I'm going to go ahead and charge here. Um, and what the enemy will probably do is they will flank charge me. They'll try to attack my flanks. I'm all right with that. I can accept that. Um, hopefully, we can, you know, be, we will be able to actually win the fight. Uh, but if we get into a flank fight, I think we can win. So let's go ahead and charge here. And once again, we actually impacted this time, crushing enemy cavalry units there. That's pretty awesome. And uh, like I said, this this flank over here is doing really well. So we'll go ahead and we'll open fire. Uh, if we can hit this dragoon unit, we will, or this light hussar. 
and light hussars are also evading, and that's just a disgrace to all hussar units. You, you don't evade or retreat as a hussar. That's just not okay. Um, let's go ahead, open up on the veteran horse. If we can get the commander shot to shoot, we will too. I'm actually leaving my cuirassiers up here. I know a lot of you guys are saying attack, attack, but since they're disrupted, uh, I really think that the best idea or the best decision is just going to be to let them, you know, basically regroup their morale. And once they're ready to fight, we'll go ahead and we'll bring them back to the battle. Uh, so let's take a look here and make sure we're not forgetting anything. I don't think we are. And we will end the turn. All right, I'm back here. Total Geek, the first Swedish cannons are just models to scare the enemy. They don't actually fire. <laughs> yes, this is a... Uh this is very true. I'm going to agree with Total Geek the first a, a million percent on that. Yes, uh, Firefly Boy, this is true. Maybe I was, uh, I may have been reading about specific Hussars. I think mine was particularly about uh, the Hussars in the Thirty Years' War, uh, this conflict between the Catholics and, and the uh, Protestants. But again, I guess you could say that even in the Thirty Years' War, there were so many different countries involved, so many different nationalities involved, uh, that, uh, you know, despite just supposedly being between you know a few countries yes that's that explains a tank of doom so i think the austrian model of the hussar uh, that original austrian model the mustache the saber uh, this sort of thing hmm pretty sure Hussar. okay let's see we've looked at that i like panoramic yeah same here firefly boy Yes, people fleeing past you from the fighting. That's never good. If you're in an army, um, if you're in an army and suddenly you have your left flank running, you know, there's a pretty good chance you're going to take off too, or at least there's a good chance you're going to go, wait a minute, that's not good. And that's something that I love about Pike and Shot is how it takes that into account, and those units get disrupted. Um, you know, they, they definitely get disrupted. They're scared. They don't know what's going to happen. Are they next? Probably. Let's go ahead and end our turn here. See what the dastardly Catholics have planned for us. Of course, we are going uphill at this point, and that's going to be pretty nasty. Uh, those cannons, all oh, those little damn cannons. I can't stand them. Uh, okay, there we go. We actually had a miss from the cannons. That actually makes me somewhat happy. Um, and let's see how the melee combat's going to go on here. Very indecisive so far. Uh, this is what I'm really concerned about is this left flank. If this left flank succeeds, we win. If it doesn't, we lose. I mean, it's really that simple. There we go. Very indecisive still. Like I said, these guys are fighting for their lives. Uh, despite the fact that we do have an advantage in this sector, the enemy is not going to give up that easily. Ooh, is that how it is? Pulling up right on my men and opening fire. And look at that. We still managed to fragment them. That's how good Swedes are. We can shoot uphill without, without any trouble whatsoever and still get a better volley of fire. And uh, there we go. As you can see, this is what I'm concerned about enemy unit trying to get behind my lines. Um, now, I should be able to charge this unit this turn and do some damage, but you never really know. Alright, this is unfortunate, but uh, our commander shot, and this is what I was worried about with the Light Hussars. Exactly what I was worried about. Um, is the Light Hussars that escape behind our lines, attacking units behind our lines. And that's the game. Come on, man. Shoot straight. God is with thee. Holy shit. Wow. Okay. As you guys see, the, parla uh, the parliamentarians, uh, the Catholics did a great fight there. And incredibly, even though our third Pike Strike was kicking their ass, um, they managed to push them back with heavy losses. Now, the good news is, our horse massively advantaged the enemy Arquebusiers, and we're gonna send those silly powder-handed bastards back to hell. I mean, all they really have are their silly pistols, and, uh, we, of course, as Hussars, have no interest in, in those cowards. We can crush them any day of the week. Of course, now we've got a command and shot unit on the run. I don't like that at all. Uh, and I may have to do something about it. Then again, I may be able to just ignore it and continue the charge. I think the enemy's trying to get my Karassiers to turn back, to face him, uh, get into a fight. I'm not sure I want to do that. I'm not sure that's a winning battle for me. Uh, let's go ahead and charge once again. Run. Yeah, keep running, cowards. Keep running. Now let's go ahead and try to charge here into the enemy um, flank right away. 33% chance of victory, 67% chance of just a mere uh, draw, and I'm going to keep it up. I'm not going to stop. I'm going to go ahead and 
Unfortunately, you can't attack with this unit since he retreated this turn. But we're going to go ahead and try to hit the Reserve Pike and Shot with everything we have. Remember, Reserve Pike and Shot, they're exactly what they sound like. They are reserves. They are peasants drawn from the lower classes. They don't want to fight in this war. Um, let's go ahead and charge uphill here. Like I said, the only way to get uphill is with the charge. You can't walk up this hill. You've got to charge. Um, and that's what we're going to do. Now, I don't like the fact that we've got an enemy cavalry unit here. Uh, sadly, we can't attack them with our cavalry unit right now. What we can do is we can charge into this unit, which is a good idea. And there we go, doing some great impact hits. Uh, we'll also move forward. And I could actually probably get on the unit's flank here. Um, get really close to the cavalry and just, or the, I should say the artillery, and just make the enemy really uncomfortable. Um, so let's go ahead. That's what we'll do. Um, we're going to get right up here. And there we go. The enemy's already disrupted. So clearly they didn't expect a bunch of crazy Swedes to come running up a hill with pikes. Uh, not something you see every day, of course. Let's see if our guns can actually fire. Come on. 23! Hey, whoever said anything nasty about these Swedish guns, we got a lucky shot there. Apparently, somebody decided to actually make a, a usable cannon for once, which is great. Um, I, you know, as much shit as I talk about the Swedish guns, to be fair, uh, the Swedish rifles, in my opinion, or muskets, perhaps, uh, is a more accurate term, are exceptional. Um, and in probably my favorite in the game. That being said, I don't know if we can actually beat them. So we're going to turn these Corossiers back. I mean, they're already disrupted, so I'm not too concerned about doing that. Um, and hopefully they can get rid of the enemy there. Uh, we'll also get these guys, uh, these Hussars, to charge into the Dragoons if we can. Uh, I could charge... I don't know if I can actually turn and charge towards these Dragoons in the same turn. But we can hit them with this unit. So there we go. And they're evading, of course. I mean, amazing how these guys evade. They just run like little rabbits. Fair enough. We'll keep moving forward. And while those guys evade, we're going to get this guy behind the enemy lines. Let's see our commanded shot. Commanded shot could actually beat this unit, so I'm actually going to have them charge the enemy commanded shot unit. And look at that seven down. They fell back. Uh, sadly, I, I wish we had stayed in combat, but I guess our guys had better things to do. Let me jump over here to the comments. Hey, Pat Garrett, how's it going? Yeah, this is probably true, Tank, but you know what? They should be men and stand and fight. Um, no, I totally agree with you. Hey, how's it going, Pat Garrett? Um, welcome to the stream, man. Pat, you gotta start showing up earlier, man. You miss so much. You miss it so much every time. <laughs> Alright, um, we're gonna jump back into the battle here, guys. And of course, if you guys want to start dropping questions down below, feel free, um... I love your feedback. It's so cool to read what you guys say about the battles. Uh, the historical stuff you guys share is absolutely awesome. Uh, because as much as I adore history, I don't know nearly as much as I wish I did. Um, I'm more or less like I would say I'm a World War II history buff. Uh, as for the Thirty Years' War, I am I have no knowledge. I have no all I know is Protestants versus Catholics, uh, a lot of Germans versus a lot of other Germans, etc., uh, etc. Et so let's go ahead here and. We will end our turn. Now, I don't like that we've got a lot of units that here that are disrupted. But again, there are a lot of fights to be had still. Um, there's still a lot of fighting to do, a lot of melee combat to do. But like I like, yeah, you can see right there, those cannons are just going to fragment our troops just to hell. Um, they're just going to shoot them up. And that's my biggest concern, is that those cannons will defeat our army before the battle is even finished um, in melee combat. And wow, I must give it to the enemy pike and shot here. For whatever reason, they are doing extremely well. We have a better... Uh, terrain in this case. We're in the woods. Uh, we have more units uh, attacking that pike shot, and he still seems to win every fight, so I don't know what's going on there. Now, there we go. Our unit won. Of course, our cavalry over here is doing extremely well. Um, and I believe one of these is a veteran horse unit. I may be wrong. He's still routing. He's still routing, and of course, we've got this fight going on in the center, and at least that's very indecisive, which is good, because we want it to be indecisive here in the center, either victorious or indecisive. Um, there we go. The enemy... Getting ballsy now, really getting right up close and personal with our men and trying to actually fire open volleys into them. And that's pretty rude. It's very rude. You gotta do something about that. Uh, by the way, I wanted to mention, uh, for those of you wondering, and uh, I actually wondered this my first time playing the game, and that is, um, is there a turn limit? There is a turn limit. So this particular battle has 14 turns remaining. It's extremely unlikely it ever gets to that. So we technically could have, in this battle, we could just remain defensive, even though we were attacking, and hope that the enemy would launch an attack first. Um, 
again, very unlikely to happen, but, you know, I wanted to show you guys the actual mechanics of combat. I wanted to show you guys the game, so I decided to go ahead and jump right into this battle. Um, in general, though, you do want to wait a little bit in the campaign. You really want to build that economy up first. You want to build several armies. You don't want to just have one massive merged army, because you can see how the enemy basically split off there on the campaign map, um, and they just ran everywhere. And there we go! Yes! Pike and Shot have broken the enemy unit. Now, this guy's breaking right in the enemy center, um, and that means we're going to jump over here um, and start charging into their other infantry unit. And there we go. We've disrupted more cavalry. Hopefully, we can disrupt these guys, too. Things are looking pretty good for us. Um, you can see over here the difference. It looks like 13% of the Catholic troops have routed, only 8% of ours have. So we are technically winning right now, um, which is pretty awesome. It is once again our turn. And I want to jump into the chat here because we are getting close to that time. Um, yes. Okay, any other questions, comments, feel free to drop them. Drop them down below. It helps me, man. All right. Um. So here we go. Uh, I think we're gonna go ahead and do another turn or two. We definitely have time for more than one or two, and uh, I would love to see if we can maybe get a victory. Uh, probably not a victory this soon, but you never know. So we're gonna go ahead here. We're gonna charge into the enemy forces. Very indecisive once again, and uh, let's grab these guys here. Charging into the enemy. Eh, no, I'm not gonna do that. That's not smart. Um. Can we hit their flanks? Again, no. This is something I never really like, is when my troops are in a position where I really don't know what to do with them. Um, and I guess that goes without saying. Uh, let's go ahead. Can we charge? Yes. So we're going to hit the commanded shot on the flank. Of course, they're going to run. And I'm amazed that they're actually able to outrun cavalry. But who knew? I mean, apparently the Germans run very quickly. I'm going to move forward here. And uh, like I said, this guy's in better cover than me. I don't like that. We're going to get right up close and personal. Our guys are leaning their muskets right on the right on these tree stumps to fire. Um, and hopefully they're going to get some kills. Let's go ahead and fire at the enemy back here. If we can charge, we will. If not, I'm actually tempted to turn towards the enemy. But that would mean putting my back towards all these enemy infantry. And that's not going to happen. So what we are going to do, we're going to keep chasing these guys with that unit, obviously. Um, if we can charge into this unit, I will. 82% chance of a win. And you guys... You, you guys... Sorry. <laughs> you guys may be wondering um, why I'm doing this. And that is because this cannon is fragmented right now, which means it's not going to be firing at me next turn. There's no way. Um, and besides, an attack on a cannon would be a wasted attack uh, because I can't attack again that turn. And if we can disrupt these guys like we just did, that's exactly what I'm going to go for. Um, so let's go ahead... We'll move up here. Um, if we can open fire on the enemy, we certainly will. Open fire. Yes. Good shooting, men. Uh, and let's see if our cannons can get a shot, too. We got a pretty good hit last turn. Thank you, motorcycle outside. I really appreciate it. Um, let's go ahead and open fire. All right. Not much going on there. Unfortunately, the Karasi is they're still, uh, they're still disrupted, but we're still going to charge. We're going to try to charge at the enemy flank. And this may actually give them a little more confidence to see that despite the fact that they're scared to shit, um, they still um, are frightening the enemy too. So we should be fine. Of course, with these guys, I'm going to have to turn back. Um, I probably should have turned back a while ago, but, you know, our men like to chase the enemy flanked units. What can I say? It's quite a fun task. It, it must be fun. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look here. All right, not a very good shot. And I was actually on an angle there, so I probably shouldn't have shot. Uh, but I'm really tempted to just get into this battle quickly and, and try to finish it uh, and, and win before the end. I, I don't think that's going to happen, but I can dream. All right, let's take a look back here. Uh, I guess we could charge these guys once again. It's just pissing me off they keep running. But if they run off the map, that's going to count as a um, fleeing. And there we go. So that's going to add to their routed number. Pretty cool. Uh, it's an interesting way to route a unit without actually routing them. Just off the map. Uh, and that counts as a route. All right, let's take a look here. Kind of wish that we could stop this guy from chasing, but then again, that usually leads to a good thing. You know, your unit chasing a, a fleeing enemy unit. Let's take a look here. Jamaican Swedes, exactly. Massive game of tack. <laughs> I 
and I hope that um the actual motorcycle outside guys is not too loud because it, right now for me it's it's very very bad um but this is something when living in New York it's just kind of an everyday thing um so we're gonna go ahead and see what the enemy is doing here I want to see what they plan to do for the end of the battle Of course the cannons, of course. And I think I actually forgot to fire our cannons off this turn. If you guys could confirm that, I'm pretty sure I did. Now there we go, exceptional melee damage for our guys. We did 49 casualties to the enemy, we only lost 8 men. So we're definitely winning on that front, and that's great. <coughs> okay, once again, more melee combat here. Still very indecisive. And, uh, wow. Once again, that is just an amazing unit. I'm gonna take a look at it after. It's the third pike and shot. Someone find out if there is any information on the third Spanish pike and shot or tercio pike and shot unit. Um, it looks like a tercio unit. Oh, these are Germans, so I'm supposing I'm, I'm I'm assuming they wouldn't bring uh, Spanish tercios all the way from Spain. So this may just be a regular third German pike and shot unit. But it has, it has that tercio vibe to it because they're just such good warriors um, that I just assume these guys are incredibly good. Um, way better than most pike and shot units. Here we go, flank attack. I was worried about that. Again, having an, an enemy cavalry behind your lines is no fun, but it happens. And what they did was even more annoying because they actually hit us and they fell back. Um, so they didn't even want to stay for the fight. They just wanted to hit us hard, you know, slash around with those sabers a bit and pull back. And here we go. Now they're trying to attack the unit that we let chase the enemy over here. And of course, those annoying units, they're just going to harass us. Um, I think uh, Tank of Doom mentioned that those Arquebusiers are great at harassing. Um, and, you know, if you can get behind the enemy unit and just open fire at a few of their troops, just annoy the hell out of them, you're going to do a lot of damage to their morale. Here we go. Nice shooting, boys. And, of course, the Swedish cannons. No, no kills whatsoever. <laughs> just fired at a hill directly in front of them. No kills whatsoever. Kind of typical, um, but it is what it is. All right, melee. Yes, that's where we shine, and now the enemy's fragmented. And if we continued here, we would break the enemy's center, but uh, obviously the units are so close in this battle, there's really no center anymore. There's really no lines. It's kind of just a jumble of fighting. And this is essentially what happens in these wars, in these battles. You get to a point where there's so much combat going on, so many flanking attacks going on, that you can't tell where your line is, you can't tell where your center is, you're just trying to survive. Um, here we're doing really well on against that unit, incredibly, and uh, it looks like on the left flank, are we still doing well? Still very indecisive. Like I said, this is the beginning of this fight, and we've been playing for about 50 minutes. Um, this left side is not broken. <laughs> I'm amazed by that, because we've put a lot of pounding into them. We've, we've charged them with numerous cavalry. Uh, so they definitely, they know. Something about these, uh, these Imperials, they know that if this line breaks, they're finished. Um, and that would be a victory for us. So we're going to go ahead and turn back. Oh no! Did not want to fall back. There should be an undo button. That's all right. Um, let's go ahead and open fire. And guys, we are getting close to the end of the stream here. So if you want to start dropping questions, comments, that sort of stuff down below, um, that would be awesome. Uh, party Commissar, if you could. I don't know if, if you're still here. If you're able to drop the channel link. Uh, obviously, guys, I am actually running a Gustavus Adolphus campaign on my channel. Um, I always like to drop a shameless link uh, at the end of my streams um, So for my Agrippa Maxanius channel. And uh, if you guys want to join me there for basically this campaign, only on a larger scale, um, and it's already well in progress, you know, stop by, you know, watch it, leave some comments, always ready to see new faces. Uh, you can also join me at my Twitch channel, which is twitch.tv slash Agrippa Maxenius. Um, and uh, I'll also be doing a lot of Pike and Shot this week. So if you want to see more Pike and Shot, uh, obviously Slytherin here, we're only doing it, I think, Thursdays and Fridays this week. I'm not sure if we're going to have any next week. We might. But on my channel, I'm going to be running it. I'm going to try to do it like every other day at one or two hour stream, just playing Pike and Shot. So I hope you guys will enjoy that. And I'm going to charge into these guys. I'm sick of seeing them. Reserve, pike, and shot. Reserve. Look at that. Look how much better our men fight to those reserves. Shameful. Shameful to bring peasants like that onto a field of battle. Uh, let's go ahead and we could charge, but no, I think I'm actually going to charge our, their uh, artillery. And look at that. So their artillery breaks, dispersed. And I told you guys, if you get into close combat with artillery, that's exactly what happens. And that's really cool. In fact, we can go ahead and maybe charge the flank here of the enemy. Um, like I said, they're a pike and shot unit, so they don't really have a flank, and I actually charge their front. Uh, but I, I want to get into fights with these guys. I, I want to try to beat them. Let's go ahead, and of course you're going to evade. Of course you're going to evade. Oh, run, you bastards. 
Oh, uh, it's all right. Nothing we can do about that. We can move forward with our Dragoons, and we can shoot them in the back. And miss. Let's go ahead here. Uh, can we do a charge? Yes, we can. Um, and incredibly, this charge might actually go really well, and it did. Uh, we actually killed nine of the enemy Dragoons, and like I said, that commanded shot, you know, despite not having pikes, don't think that the only units that can fight cavalry are, are units with pikes, because this commanded shot, in general, when I attack cavalry with, with, with them, unless it's like veteran cavalry or cuirassiers, uh, I usually actually win. Um, I don't know why that is. Uh, they must have something about them. Maybe they just know how to shoot horses well. <laughs> it's just something. Uh, anyway, guys, we are winding down here. Uh, yes, we will definitely, um, uh, Party Commissar just dropped a, a link there. Thank you, Party Commissar. Um, yes, there is, there is 21st Gen, so if you click that link and just go to, uh, Video Manager, or I don't know what you guys look at, um, you can kind of see, just go to my first video, which is, um, believe it's Gustavus Adolphus, and uh, in that video I basically am playing as the Swedes like I am here, uh, only I'm doing the entire campaign all the way through. Um, so yeah, for those of you guys that are just watching Pike and Shot and you're not sure if you should buy it, uh, you definitely should. Now, Pike and Shot campaigns doesn't just include, you know, it doesn't just include Pike and Shot campaigns, it includes the original Pike and Shot game in its entirety. So you're getting Pike and Shot, you're getting the Pike and Shot campaigns, you're getting more maps, you're getting more free battles, it's totally worth the purchase. Uh, if you're going to buy Pike and Shot, you might as well just get Pike and Shot campaigns. You just, you just might as well. Um... Thank you so much, Party Commissar, for leaving those links, man. I appreciate that so much. Uh, and obviously, guys, if you want to leave uh, or visit those links and uh, leave some comments, uh, watch some videos, you know, feel free. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot more combat. Now, to end the stream here, I always like one of my favorite things about Pike and Shot is the ability to see casualties. I don't know what it is about me, but I'm sort of a statistics nerd. Uh, and that's not to say I'm good at statistics. I'm terrible at math. Um, however, um, I do like to see, like, military statistics in combat. And it looks like our losses here of the enemy, we managed to kill 187 foot soldiers. We wounded 575. And I can only imagine what wounds in this era would be like uh, with the just terrible medical practices it's like what's that do you have a musket wound to your arm let's lay a bible on it and sprinkle holy water and hope you get better everybody pray it's it just doesn't work you know if you get wounded in this in this period you're, you may or may not lose a limb um so in this case 575 wounded 380 running away um this is actually referring to our men um, 103 horses we lost, 327 wounded uh, horses, and 349 routed. And I wonder what happens to wounded horses. I'm pretty sure they all just get killed. I don't think that a horse can get wounded and be okay. Um, and here we go. Total killed is 290. Total wounded, 902. Now, for the enemy, we actually killed more, or uh, I should say, they, they killed more of us. Um, we killed 263. Uh, 819 wounded altogether, and 463 routed. But as you can see here, we not only routed more of the enemy, we also wounded more of the enemy, and we also killed more of them altogether. Um, but I guess in total, when you round everything up, uh, the enemy actually has slightly less for their total. Um, and they lost four guns, we lost eight guns. Oh, this is enemy. They lost eight guns, we lost four guns. That makes sense. Um, and very, very cool. So I love looking at the losses after the battle. And obviously, this battle has a long way to go. Uh, right now, Catholic troops routed 13%. Swedish troops routed 8%. You have to get that up to 40% uh, to be able to win. And even then, it's got to be at least 25% more than the enemy. So for instance, if you're at 40% and the enemy is at 20%, you've got to get 45% to win. Once you get to 60%, you win automatically. So that's pretty awesome. Um, so this battle would go on for quite a while. This would this would probably go on for four or five more turns, maybe more. I, I don't think it would reach the end of the 12 turns, but we would keep you getting pretty damn close. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the stream. I'm going to quickly jump back here to the questions once again. Uh, see if anybody has any questions to ask me. Just post them down below. Yes, they become delicious too. Indeed, Party Commissar. Um, yes, thank you, Tony First Gen, for taking a look there. And... Um, yeah, I hope you guys get the game. I hope you guys want to see more Pike and Shot. Um, I believe the next game I will be playing is going to be this Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But I hope you guys will show up. And I'm pretty sure we will be playing either Gary Grigsby's War in the East or we will be playing Gateway to Khan. And of course, if uh, Tank of Doom is still here, he's usually my partner in Gateway to Khan. Uh, we, we tend to play multiplayer matches together, so you'll be seeing him there too. Uh, and that should be pretty awesome. 
Ah, this makes sense. Thanks, Total Greek. So perhaps uh, the dismounted dragoons in this case, because I guess they can dismount, uh, are easier to attack with commanded shot. But maybe if you attack like the hussars. Um, oh, oh, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. In other words, wounded the mounted troops, not the actual horses. Ah, understood, understood. Actually, that's better. That's even better because uh, I'm assuming most of the horses would uh, would probably be, be be dead or just run away from the battle after their poor master dies. Um, anyway, guys, thank you so much for uh, stopping by and uh, leave a little thanks there. Um, and you guys can eventually remember my name. If you re if you say it enough times, I will catch on. <laughs> I, I know I have a complex YouTube name. If you say it enough times, you're going to remember. And there's Tank of Doom. Yes, yes, it is Tank. And uh, we will be playing certainly on that date, either Thursday or Saturday. I will be streaming both Thursday and Saturday. I'm just not sure which game I'm going to be streaming first, if I'm going to stream Gateway to Con or if I'm going to stream Gary Grisby's War in the East. But that's also going to be on the Slytherin channel. So I really hope to see you guys there. Um, thank you for showing up today. It's been awesome. I'd love to hear all your, uh, support, all your feedback, support. Uh, the historical data is amazing. Uh, if any of you guys wants to stop by my channel and give me a little brief summary of the 30 Years' War, uh, you know, condensed version of the 30 Years' War, uh, I would love that because I really do need a little history lesson in this period. Uh, thank you so much, guys, for watching. You're all awesome. And we're going to go ahead and sign off now. Slytherin forever! And things, like, things of this nature.